In September of 1982, my mother died suddenly of a heart attack. I was 24 years old at the time and attending graduate school in Southern California. In December of that year, the head of the English department told me that it would be unethical to encourage me to pursue my PhD. So my mother was dead and I had failed at the only thing I had ever been good at. I stayed in Southern California that spring to honor my lease and switched from part-time to full-time at the bookstore where I had been working. At one point, I had set a conflict that was so bad with my roommates that I stayed up for two nights shaking, thinking one of them was going to stab me in my sleep. In May of that year, the lease was up, and I moved in with my mother's best friend. All of my worldly possessions were on her back-covered patio, and I slept on the couch and commuted about 40 minutes to work. In July of that year, I packed up my Toyota and headed back to Texas. My father was marrying the woman he had had a long time affair with while I was in high school and college, an affair that almost destroyed my mother. I was due to arrive back in Dallas the night before the rehearsal for their wedding. However, my car broke down in Tal Hart, Texas. In Tal Hart, Texas in 1983, they had never seen a Toyota before. So, much to my father's anger and dismay, I put a um, hotel room on his charge card that night, got up early the next morning, and drove straight through to Amarillo, where they did have a Toyota dealership. Fortunately, I was able to get my car repaired fairly quickly and get back on the road. I arrived back in Dallas about an hour and a half before the rehearsal. I spent the remainder of that summer packing up my parents' house and going through memorabilia from World War II to the present. We had to put, have my dog that I had grown up with put to sleep, and it was a hard summer. However, in August, I, met, I went to Detroit to help my sister out. She had twins who were not quite two and was expecting another baby. I spent a lot of time in and out of the hospital over the next weeks, six weeks that I stayed there with her because one of the twins had to have major ear surgery. We all got infected with an intestinal parasite. It was rough. By the end of that six weeks, I had a dream that I was a paid assassin and I was shooting midgets and I decided it was a sign it was time for me to move on. So I came back to Dallas. The next several months living with my dad and stepmother were difficult. We learned later that my stepmother suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder. She would wash my towels every day. After I'd made my bed, she would remake it to make it more neatly. If I picked up a magazine off the coffee table and did not put it back at precisely the right angle, she got hysterical. If I happened to stay up late at night watching television and did not put the remote control back at in exactly the right spot in the drawer afterwards, she got ballistic. Somewhere in the midst of this, my dad and my brother decided that I needed to get out of there for Christmas, and my brother graciously invited me to spend Christmas with he and his family in California. Because I was working retail, I had to work through Christmas Eve, and so my flight was scheduled out that evening. Up until last February, December of 1983, was the coldest winter on record in the DFW area. And that evening, it began to sleet. My dad called the airport to make sure that the flight was still scheduled. And we got in his car and headed to the airport, much over my stepmother's objection. It was a stupidly dangerous drive, and I'm really grateful he didn't have an accident. But I made it to the plane. I got on the plane, they de-iced it, and we started to take off. As we were taxiing down the runway, the plane fishtailed in the ice. I later learned we were the last plane to take off from DFW that evening. But we took off and I was headed to California and the loving arms of my brother's family for Christmas. Midway through the flight, it had gotten dark outside. The pilot had turned all the lights out and he came over the intercom and he read the Christmas story. And that is where God showed me his compassion. I was reminded 
that Jesus came to heal a hurting world and to save us. That Jesus had come to heal and save a hurting me.